Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, this is Joni Young and I'm gonna teach you step-by-step -step how to paint this pretty River of Dreams acrylic painting today. I'm working on an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I've got a number 30 filbert brush that I'm gonna start this painting with. The very first thing I'm gonna do is just pick up a little bit of water on my brush and wet down the canvas a little bit. Okay, so just a little bit of water on the canvas is really going to help you blend out your acrylics easier. Now I'll quickly go over the colors I'm using today and I'll also have a full list below this video in the description box. There's a little arrow down on the bottom right. Click on that. It'll take you there. Okay, we've got titanium white, neon yellow cool, pink, rose, burnt sienna, dioxazine purple, cobalt blue hue, aqua green, turquoise, hunter green, and light olive green. So what I wanna do is go ahead and start working on the background. I'm gonna create a really soft, pretty pastel background. If you don't have the exact same colors I'm using today, just use whatever you have close or really any colors that you want for this. You're just gonna follow it the same way as me using the same process, steps, and techniques. I'm gonna start with a little bit of pink and I'm gonna add the pink right here in the very middle up and down with my brush. Now I've got a few drips happening, a little bit too much water on my brush. If that happens, just wipe the excess off. But you guys know me, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I like to add a, a few drips to my paintings, especially my fantasy paintings, like what I'm using today or painting today. So I don't mind if there's a little bit of uh, drippy paint that flows down the canvas. Okay, so we've got a little bit of pink starting in the middle, working my way over just a little bit. I've left about a quarter uh, blank there, and then I'm going to even add a little bit just on the far right. Okay, I'm going to just wipe the excess paint off on a towel. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. I'm going to begin on the far end here, far right side, and then slowly working my way into that pink a little bit. So let's take a little bit more, do that again. You're gonna to wanna to clean your brush out now and get ready for the next color, which is a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of white. I'm gonna start on the far left and work my way into the pink, pick up a little bit more white up and down brush stroke and go right over part of that pink. Okay, so we've got turquoise into pink, into yellow. We've got a pretty peachy tone happening here. And now I'm gonna wash this brush off and I'll completely dry the canvas off and we'll get ready for our next step. For the next step, I'm gonna be using the same number 30 filbert brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of my neon rose just on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to start from right about here, gently pulling and flicking. Grab a little bit more there. This is sort of an instant forest kind of background here. And really, it's all about just this pop of color and how it's going to look so pretty with our greens and purples and blues and all those other fun colors we're going to be adding eventually. I'm going to add a little bit extra just in some areas for a little bit more of a punch, saturation. And I'm just leaving a little space right here for where we're going to have uh, another opening here for some water coming down. And then right away without washing my brush off the next color i'm going to be using is dioxazine purple and i'm going to go from the top here top left pull down straight down i'm going to come over on the other side kind of just on an angle here just to switch it up a little bit kind of slope it down like this we're gonna go right down to the bottom. We want the bottom foreground to be nice and dark. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my doxazine purple and some of that beautiful blue. 
And now I'm going to continue making these slopes a little bit lower. It already looks like waterfalls, doesn't it? Now I'm going to go into my blue and a little bit of turquoise. See, my brush is kind of loaded with a little bit of each. And I'll just start pulling down like that. And then I'm going to work the excess out on the canvas, getting that paint out of my brush. Take a little bit more of all three colors. You can even just kind of just slide and pull your brush to load it like this. Now we're going to bring this up right about here so we have a darker underpainting to add our lighter colors for our waterfall. Time, I'm going to go across the bottom right about a quarter of the way up the canvas from the bottom we're going to pull across back and forth okay now I'm going to wash my brush off I'm going to completely dry this off again and then we're going to start coming in with our trees we'll build up to our waterfalls and foreground where we have those beautiful glowing little jewels in the river Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to be painting a few trees here with a number eight filbert brush. Feel free to use a smaller or larger one if you don't have a number eight like this. And I'm going to be taking the following colors, burnt sienna, some purple, and a little bit of hunter green. So we'll just mix them all up right here. It's okay if you have a little bit of that blue in there too. We just want a nice deep dark color and just load the brush. I want to mention that I don't have water on my brush. If anything, I just get it a little bit damp, then I dry it off on a towel um, just to moisten the bristles up a little bit so that the paint doesn't get soaked into the bristles, but it can work out of the brush onto the canvas. So if you have too much water in your brush, you're going to be left, left with too much of a transparent uh, brush stroke, and you're not going to be happy with what you're working on unless you're going for something that's um, thinned out paint, watered down, or transparent, but we're not doing that right now. So hardly any water on my brush, and we're just going to start adding some trees in here. So I'm just going to pull from right about here. Remember, we had our line here for the foreground where the water is going to be, and we're just going to start gently pulling up a little line like this. Okay, so if you want, you can add some fuller and thicker brush strokes and then you can turn your brush like this so turning it this way to add some tall tree trunks and then a little bit thicker down here so i'm going to add four or five of these on each side we'll see i could it could change a little bit and then i'm just going to turn my brush this way now and i'm going to start kind of very gently adding little branches on the top and then start pushing a little bit fuller and bring them out a little bit wider and we'll just bring them to about there so a little peak on the top there okay load my brush up again let's get a little bit of that green in there and We'll begin adding a few little baby branches on the top. Each tree is going to look a little bit different and, and have its own kind of character. So don't worry about anything that's a little bit lopsided or uneven. All trees are different and unique. And sometimes it's those uh, leaning trees that are a bit crooked and funny looking that have the most character and create a really special photograph or painting. Okay, mixing more up, no water on my brush still. Now, depending on the size canvas that you're using, you might wanna go up or down a size in your brush. So I have a lot of people ask me, 
what size of brush are you using? How do I know what kind of brush or what size of brush to use? Really guys, you have to trust your uh, common sense here. Like just realize that if you're working on a large canvas, you're definitely gonna need a larger brush, right? So kind of just think about it and, um, and you can also practice because sometimes we don't know and, and sometimes the brushes that I'm using, the sizes of them you may not be comfortable with. So brushes are very personal and uh, it's different for everybody. Okay, with the excess paint here, I'm gonna come along the edge and just wiggle, gently work and scumble out the remainder of the paint. I'm gonna take a little bit more and I'm gonna add a shadow right here. We're gonna have like some little bit of land and uh, low lying little bluffs or grass kind of right in here. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna sneak in a few little waterfalls in here too. Um, and now I'm gonna just continue making that color again. Burnt sienna, daxine purple, a little bit of that blue is fine, and hunter green. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some rocks and some shadows along here, just half circles. So pushing on the side of my brush and sweeping over, then boating my brush up again. If you lose the shape of your fan brush, just wiggle, wiggle like this gently, push and wiggle, and you'll get that nice flat fan shape back again. Okay, we're gonna add a few more trees here. Again, just little ones on the top. And again, I really love the filbert brush, so that's why you see me using it a lot in my videos, but some people love uh, the fan brush. So you might be one of those people, artists that feels more comfortable um, using a fan brush. Go ahead. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using to paint along with me. I think that's a big misconception that some people have. They think, oh, I don't have that color. I can't follow along. Or because I'm left-handed, some people think they can't follow along. That's just silly, right? So whatever I'm doing with my left hand, you do the same with your right hand. It's no different. I used to watch Bob Ross as a kid, and he's, he was right-handed. And I never even thought about that at all. I think people just kind of psych themselves out and overthink things. Um, but really, there's no difference at all. Okay, so I'm just going to continue adding these pretty trees in here. Right now, I am just picked up a little bit of water. I'm thinning the paint out a little bit just so that I can get some lighter looking trees here in the back. And I'm going to do something a little bit different here with my brush. I'm going to kind of tap and then you can even turn it this way too. Tap and then create little tiny scoops if you look closely. In little scoops like this. Make this one a little bit taller. And then I'm going to wash this brush out. And right in here, I'm gonna add some purple ones, purpley blue ones. So I'm gonna, the clean brush, pull in to that beautiful doxazine purple and cobalt blue hue. Again, you don't have to have the exact shades that I'm using. Let's just add a little bit of white in there with that purple and blue. And I'm just gonna pull and sweep up like this. We'll add some really pretty light colored trees, making them look kind of misty and farther away. So the lighter you go with your background colors, the farther away they'll look. It really helps to add to the mood of your painting and create a perspective and atmosphere. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more here. And if any of this paint is still wet underneath where I applied it a little bit thicker, I might accidentally pull into that, but oh, it must be all dry, but it's pretty. I don't mind if I pick up a little bit of that blue and purple because it's 
pretty much the same color I'm using right now, isn't it? So just these little taps, sweeps, add a little bit more white sometimes, and you'll get a few different shades of that soft purple. And see how my trees are sort of leaning like this? I love that. I think it just adds so much, uh, just a little bit of whimsy. And that's what art is all about. It's about looking at something or thinking about something and having fun with it, exaggerating it or painting it the way it makes you feel, exaggerating on the colors that you see, just adding a little bit of that light purple to this tree. And we'll be adding um, some light olive green as well. You just take a little bit more of that purple in there. And I'll add some to this one back here. And I'm not necessarily covering up all of the base color that I have, which is that watered down uh, burnt sienna and dioxazine purple and green. I'm just adding, adding a little bit here and there. All right, so I think we have a great start to this. I'm washing my brush out now, and I'm going to come in and add that, go back to that dioxazine purple blue, burnt sienna, hunter green mixture and combo that we have. And I'm going to add a little bit more contrast in here and layers of rocks. Maybe a little something right in here in the front. Maybe that tree's behind there. We'll just bring this down here and then pull across. So a few little rock structures or hills there in it. From the side, a little scumble. Add a little bit more right in here. We're going to have that other little waterfall that comes down. We'll have three main waterfalls. We're going to have one, no, actually four. We're going to have a few coming right in here, here, one here, and then this one over here. I'm just washing out my brush now. Now, while these trees are drying a little bit, what I'd like to do is bring some sunlight right in here. And, oh yeah, I, I can. If you catch it, the background is dry, but because it's watered down and thin, I can gently remove some of that paint. If you can't do that, then you're just gonna take white and a little bit of yellow. White and yellow, just like this, a little bit of water. And we're just gonna come around and add a little bit of that right there. I'm also going to come right in here carefully. We're just adding some light. And I'm going to come right over where we're starting that waterfall from. Again, just using a filbert brush. And the same thing right over here. So adding a little bit of this yellow. This yellow right here on the edge is going to add some beautiful light hitting some moss around the edge of this big rock here, cliff, and a little waterfall. I'm going to take just a little bit of turquoise without washing my brush off, and we'll just start just pulling and flicking down like this. Nothing too fancy. That's all you have to do to add a little waterfall. Let's move this over here. Make some room on my palette and right here pull and drop and then we're going to sweep out from the bottom just like this and then just start back and forth with the very tip of the brush you can add a little bit of turquoise 
And again, right in here at the base of the waterfall, you can even curve up like this. We want to have it feel like the water's just draping and creating this beautiful blanket full of sparkles and, and gems just coming down. And then we're going to curve this one, comes down, drapes down, right down in here. Of course, we've got this one here, but a few different layers. I'm going to start right here, though. These trees are going to take just a little bit longer to dry, so. Okay, we're going to create levels on an angle like this. So you're just going to turn, and there's a few brushes that you can use. You can use a angle brush or dagger, a little flat brush. I'm just picking up a little bit of water. Notice how it's not dripping. If your brush is dripping, you have way too much water. And then just have it come over top of this rock here, spilling over. Isn't that pretty? Let's take a little bit more white. Acrylic paint dries darker. So if you don't know that and you're just starting out, it's important to know because you might be very frustrated if you're not aware of that and think you're doing something wrong and then when we get frustrated when we start something new we end up quitting right before we can even get anywhere with it so i want to tell you guys about all those little things that you might not know about acrylic taking some of the blue with the turquoise and the white and i'm going to come up over on this side now pull drop and that purple is wet underneath but I like that because I like picking up those other colors that as long as they go with the color scheme that I'm using and you can make new colors and you just get a really uh, beautiful blended effect. So just a few more waterfalls here in the distance, a little bit more of the, you really want the, the paint to be on the tip of your brush when you're um, working on waterfalls. It'll make it a lot easier and you'll get a better outcome. Okay, so I'm just going to wiggle, wiggle. You can kind of create these sort of S's, S curves like this. And a little down here as well. I'm going to take the blue and the purple like this and just start adding some of this. The whole idea is to have it dark to light. We need to have the glowing effect here in the water. We need to have a dark base first. So that's why we've got it really dark here. And I'm gonna go ahead and load the end of my brush up with a bit more of the turquoise. And I'm gonna start adding it right about here and drop, drop, and then you can kind of Wiggle a little bit, create a little bit of movement there. Might add some up, up along here as well. You can just pull from the base as well. You can go from the top or you can go from the bottom up. I like to use sort of both techniques, a bit more of that turquoise here. Let's see if I can find a good size brush here. I'm going to use my number 16. You can use your number eight, any size that you feel comfortable with. All we're doing is layering some colors over here now. So the first thing I want to do is sneak in a little bit more of this gorgeous neon rose. Now this color is by Holbein, the Luminous Neon Heavy Body Acrylic Series. You can get a whole set of them. Um, I'm usually pretty good at leaving the link below. I don't make any money off of it. I just like to share the supplies that I enjoy using. 
uh, with you guys. And many of you guys have purchased these and you absolutely love them. So um, have a look below. And if I happen to forget to add the link, just leave a comment below uh, reminding me. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this and just start pulling in here and there. Layering over. So what this color does, these colors are transparent. So you can use them as glazes. Once you're underneath coat, um, your painting is dry. You can go over top like this and just see by layering it like that. It's just beautiful. So I like to add a little bit of this before I add my uh, light olive green. And a little bit over here as well. Let's just layer, start creating a little bit more magic here by layering some colors in. And then just a little bit more right here. Okay, without washing my brush off, I'm going to take some of my light olive green and I'll just start layering over part of the trees. You can add more or less if you want. What I like to do here on my channel and with my painting demonstrations is open your mind up to how to use color more and how to not fear it so much, okay? So there's a lot of fear involved with using bright colors. And that's what I wanna show you guys is that color, there's nothing to be afraid of. Color is fun, it's beautiful, and it's a really enjoyable um, way to express yourself and create paintings. I just add a little bit down in here along the sides for some a little bit of moss and we'll layer up a little bit over this as well after with some more colors and a little bit along the side here and have a little path or a little grass landing right here so just by pulling your brush like this putting it up again pull 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 bring it out into a little point and then back and just dust over Gently brush right over the edge there. Add a little bit in here. And the light olive green is gonna dry darker. We'll adjust the color after, but we're just working in layers here. So one layer at a time. And what I really love is to add a little bit of this light olive green over top of where we've got this neon yellow that's over top of the pink. This is how you create an interesting painting that has so much life to it and mood. It's all about taking the time to add the layers. But really, this painting tutorial, this is real time and uh, it's not taking hours. So um, when I say take the time to do it, it's still even not that long. So anybody, no matter what level of painting you're at, you can all do this and follow along with me. Okay, so ready for the next step, we're going to be taking some turquoise and a little bit of that hunter green. I haven't washed my brush out. There's a little bit of that um, light olive green in there too. Now because pinks and purples go so well with green, they're complementary, I've decided to add some of this in here, again playing with color. What's the worst that could go wrong if you don't like it? Acrylic is very forgiving and you can just paint over top of it. You can kind of tone the colors or mute them by adding a little bit of burnt sienna uh, or a little bit of black if you want. There's so many different ways of doing it. I'm gonna add a little bit of this in here as well. Just kind of sweep over here a bit. I'm going to kind of tap out a few little areas here. There we go. OK, 
Okay, the next brush I want to use is one of my mop brushes. So I've got these really cool one inch mop brushes. Um, the handle used to be iridescent, like pearly and really rainbowy and pretty, but I've had these for a while now and that has uh, fallen off. Um, but the brushes remain like new. They're just the best, the best. And these are actually makeup brushes. So I got these from Amazon, a whole set of them for under $20. I have a link usually in the bottom uh, or in the description box of the, of my videos as well, if you want to check those out. And I'm going to, without any water, you don't want to add water and to these brushes until you're done using them, of course, to wash them off. But prior to using them for this, a specific technique of creating some moss and, and bushes in the background. We're not going to add water. We're going to go straight into a little bit of doxazine purple, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of blue, and a bit of hunter green. Okay, so just a little bit of paint like that, not over mixing or blending. And I'm just going to start tapping in right in here. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, at the base of the water. And just a little bit up in here, right in there, a little bit along here, and a little bit along the water's edge, right there. So let's get a little bit more, and we'll, we can add some right in here as well. So we've got a little bit of a, a hill here, right? It, it has to make sense. The water's coming down something. There's got to something that creates gravity. So we'll build this area up and then just pull and sweep lightly. Work the rest out of my brush just off the edge like this. A little there as well. And then tap a little bit, just going up the edge of the waterfall on that side. Okay, the next color, light olive green. Let's go ahead and add some bright green highlights to our mossy little bank here. A little bit there, a little bit in here as well. And here I'm going to add a few different colors. So the turquoise, hunter green, and light olive green. Just add a little bit here and tap, tap, tap lightly. And I'm just going to sweep a little bit here. And then quickly go over to a filbert brush. I'm not worried about what size. I just want to get this blended before it dries too much. So maybe we've got a little bit of a flat grassy area here. Maybe it's moss covered rocks, or maybe it's a little bit of a reflection in the water. So you could easily do that just by pulling up and down brush strokes. If you want to make it look more like water, it's up to you. But I'm going to take a little bit more doxazine purple, burnt sienna and blue and add a few more dark patches in here. Okay, so right in here, I'm going to take some of that blue, hunter green, burnt sienna, the dark, dark colors again. And I'm going to add a little bit of really dark shadow. We're going to add some more contrast here. I'm going to go over some areas where I've got the green. Not all of it, but some of them I just want to tone a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix it up with a bit of that olive green, kind of get a little scoop there on the end. And I'll add a little bit extra here. 
and choose a few areas where I have uh, a little bit extra. Where those branches will be catching the light a little bit more. And I want to take some of this beautiful yellow now, the neon yellow, without washing my brush off. Okay, and I want to have that sunlight. Beautiful sunlight, really just getting the edge here. A little bit right here too. And right around here, I'm gonna pull little lines. Just as it's coming around the corner here, maybe this is a little path that you can take around the waterfalls. Maybe the waterfalls go right underneath and then down here. So maybe the sunlight I'll just catch the edge here a little bit. And then a little bit here and there. I have some coming down here as well. It's a little off the top. I'm just rinsing my brush out now, making sure that Paint isn't starting to settle up in my brush and dry because that can ruin it. I'm taking a little bit more white, neon yellow. We're going to start adding some more of the waterfalls here. The base, bring it around here. Mixed in with a little bit of that turquoise. Have a little bit of all three colors, white, yellow, and turquoise. Then we can just kind of have it dropping over the edge here. Again, where the light's going to be hitting. Another little area here. And I'm just going to add these little wavy lines back and forth, wiggle, wiggle down at the, the base of the fall. I'm going to add a little bit more turquoise, a little bit of white in there, and the blue. Another blue that would look really pretty here is uh, you could add a phthalo blue. Just coming off the corner here, edge. Pull and drop. A little bit more turquoise. And see how the brush splits into two like that? I like that for waterfalls because then you get those natural little lines in there where the water kind of separates and you see some shadows through. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of white without washing my brush off. I'm going to start pulling on the top and then I'm going to just tap, 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 tap. Light little taps like this. And this could be some of the magical stars, whatever they are, little gems, little lights coming down into the water. And start adding little dabs. I mean, they could even be um, little water lilies if you wanted them to be, lily pads and 
I'm gonna make a few of them a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna gently push, very gentle pushing on some of them to make them look like they have a little bit of a glow. And then smaller, smaller, smaller as they get further away. And then the little ones coming down from the base of each waterfall. So make some of them bigger and some of them smaller. Tap and dab. Okay, I'm going to completely dry this off. Actually, just before I dry this off, I have to get a little bit of these white blobs blended out. Otherwise, it's not going to dry off. And what I'm going to show you how to do is create some glazes using these uh, neon paints. And then we'll add a final coat of white after we get all the colors in there that we want. Add a few scumples here over top of the purple river. Just a little dry brush or scumble with a leftover white from these little dabs. Okay, so now that it's all dried off, I'm gonna take a little bit of my luminous rose or neon rose, and I'm gonna to start to go over some of these ones here on the off to the right. And I'm gonna kind of weave in and around. We'll get a few of these other ones back here. I'm going to add a little bit of this rose down in here, a little bit of it right in here. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And the next color, I'm going to be using pink, neon pink. And I'm going to start going over some of the other ones. Or you can just add this to the ones at the, at the base of the waterfall and a little flick up. You can add them over top of the purple or the rose colored ones. Add a little bit in here. See how nice it is though, being able to use these and create a little filter. They're so fun to use. Can add a little bit more back here. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to be taking one of my round brushes. This is a number three. And I'm going to be using some yellow and I'm going to dab a little bit of yellow. You can have a little bit of white in, in with it as well if you want. I'm going to be adding white after anyway, so if you want to just get it done in one shot, then just use, load your brush up with a little bit of each. Dot, dot, dot going up 
little flecks there going up the waterfall. And then the yellow and white over top of the pink ones are going to make a peachy color, which is really pretty. So we have, you know, all these colors coming together and blending into one another. Um, giving us a sense of like a rainbow in the water. I'm gonna go ahead and add some down down here as well. Take a little scoop of yellow, pink, a little bit of white. I'm going to mix up a little bit more yellow with my pink. And I'll go over the outside of some of these. I love the way the pink just glows in the water against the the rose and that purple and then of course we've got that turquoise on the side add some more of the rose in here i just love it i will wash my brush out and i'm going to turn my brush whoops this way just so you guys can See a little bit better what I'm doing in here. Place my pinky here where I know it's dry and it's safe to do so. Create kind of a, a ripply effect, right? And then a little bit of the blue. I'm going to take a little bit of white in with it. And add that too. And then a little scoop of turquoise and the blue. And I'm going to create these pretty little glowing ripples. And more of the yellow, turquoise, and white. A little bit more blue. I haven't washed my brush out. I bring this in a little bit for some shadow. I have just a few shadows in there. A little of each, blue and turquoise. And this is just with a round brush. Just adding a few more of these. This 
So every color kind of transitions nicely and calmly into the next. I'm going to go into my light olive green with a little bit of white. I'll just add a little bit of a grassy area in here, maybe. A few little grassy areas. Back over to a filbert. This one's a size zero. Add a little bit of neon yellow, a bit of turquoise white, light olive green again. Little line here, here, here. And we'll have a little, little path going up. And go up this path. There's a waterfall underneath. Or off to the side and below, wherever. So on the top of each step, which line you want to have. A nice mossy layer to stand on. And I'm going to use my round brush again. And I'm going to take my dioxazine purple with a little bit of blue, a little bit of white in there. And I'm going to add a tree right here, kind of over top of that other one, or maybe this is the other one. I'm just going to add a little bit more to it. A bit of burnt sienna, hunter green, rose. A little bit of grass coming down on the side or moss. Let's get a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of olive green, and just kind of tap to create a bit of moss coming down. And then a little bit of hunter green with olive green and maybe we've got a got some vines kind of attaching to these stairs. Take a little bit more of the Olive green here. Go back over to my neon yellow that's mixed with a little bit of the pink. A little bit more pink, and we'll add a little bit more of a pop, or pop 
color down here. See, you can just go right over top. And then we can come back in with some white. Okay, a little bit of white, dab, dab. Let's just mix it up with a little bit of that yellow. So we're tinting our white a little bit. Sparkle over here. A little bit more white right there. I'm just going to soften that with my pinky. Make it glow a little bit more. Okay, we're just about finished this one. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Or have enjoyed it. A little bit of blue turquoise white with my round brush here. We're going to come in along the side, push, pull and drop. I always enjoy sharing my fun, intuitive fantasy paintings with you guys and I sure appreciate all your love and support here on my channel. You guys make it possible for me to continue providing content for you. So if you want to help keep that going, you can join Patreon and subscribe here to my channel, share the videos, and feel free to paint along, have painting groups with your friends, and learn to be more free with your creativity and grow as an artist. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to wish you guys a wonderful day, happy painting, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!